This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus three hours and holding. The seven STS-58 astronauts have now convened around the breakfast table at the Operations and Checkout Building. Here we have payload specialist and veterinarian Marty Fetman will be making his first trip in space today. Payload commander, mission specialist number one, Dr. Ray Seddon. Our STS-58 commander is John Blaha. Sitting on the right-hand seat of the orbiter is pilot Rick Sirfoss. Mission specialist, Dr. David Wolf. Mission specialist number four, Dr. Shannon Lucid. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bill MacArthur, mission specialist number two. Astronauts were awakened about 40 minutes ago and following this uh, pre-flight meal, will be headed next door to don their flight suits in preparation for launch. And they're thumbs up and ready to fly. The launch team obviously hoping the third time is the charm for Columbia and STS-58. The STS-58 mission patch was designed by the astronauts, as are the patches of practically every space shuttle flight. The names of the seven crew members can be seen flanking the outside of the patch on each side of the patch uh, under, in between the astronauts' names are these uh, insignias of the veterinary and medical fields. This represents our veterinarian Marty Fetman and our doctors aboard as well as the medical and life sciences experiments to be conducted on SLS-2. The curly Q signs outside of the orbiter represent DNA, the life or the source of uh, life here on Earth, a building block of life. The space shuttle can be seen clearly in the picture with the number two embedded over the space lab module and the orbiter is flying into the space lab life sciences insignia. Underneath the shuttle orbiter, the United States can be seen quite clearly representing the fact that this is a U.S. mission. In the operations and checkout building, the STS-58 flight crew are donning their flight suits in preparation for this morning's launch. Our commander is Colonel John Blaha, giving, uh, giving us a thumbs up and signaling that he's ready for flight today. This will be the fourth trip in space for Colonel Blaha. Payload specialist is Dr. Marty Fetman. This will be the first trip in space for Dr. Fetman, who also has the distinction of becoming the first veterinarian to make a shuttle flight. His primary purpose on this mission will be the care and handling for the 48 rodents flying on the Space Lab Life Sciences II. Here's mission specialist Dr. David Wolf, wishing everyone a good morning and gearing up for his first flight in space. The orange pressure suits the astronauts wear are, are actually altitude pressure ensembles that include communications gear as well as, a, as well as a helmet and gloves and other emergency essentials. Mission specialist number two is Bill MacArthur. Bill is a lieutenant colonel in the Army and has served as a CAPCOM or capsule communicator in the Johnson Space Center among his duties since becoming an astronaut in 1990. This will be the first trip in space for Lieutenant Colonel MacArthur. And here's our payload commander and mission specialist number one, Dr. Ray Seddon, giving us the AOK -okay sign and a thumbs up. This will be the third trip in space for Dr. Seddon who also, aside from her astronaut duties, serves as an emergency room physician in Houston hospitals. Columbia's commander is pilot, Rick, or Columbia's pilot is Rick Searfoss, and this will be the first trip in space for Rick.
Our mission specialist number four is Dr. Shannon Lucid, obviously very relaxed this morning. The astronauts are assisted in the donning of their suits by uh, technicians who have worked with the crew since the time they were selected for this particular flight. This will be the 15th flight in space for Columbia, which was the very first space shuttle, originally launched on April 12, 1981. And we have a live video shot of our seven STS-58 crew members as they leave their crew quarters en route for the elevator. Director of Flight Crew Operations, David Liesma, and our T-38 and shuttle training aircraft weather pilot, Jim Weatherby, accompanying the crew members. The crew being led out by Commander John Blaha and Dr. Ray Seddon, our payload commander. It is approximately a 10 mile trip from the operations and checkout building launch pad 39B and there has been 30 minutes allotted in the timeline for that travel. En route to the launch pad, the Astro van will make a stop at the intersection of the Saturn Causeway and the Kennedy Parkway to allow our weather pilot, Jim Weatherby, to leave the vehicle and begin his trip over to the shuttle landing facility. The Astro van will also stop at the Launch Control Center to allow our Director of Flight Crew Operations, David Liestma, and other members of management to leave the vehicle. T minus 20. All systems remain go at T minus 15 seconds. 10. Yellow scope for main engine start. Set T minus 6, 5, 4. We have main engine start. 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia on a life sciences mission for Earth and space. Houston is now controlling. Columbia, roll program. Roger, roll, Columbia. Mission control sees a good roll maneuver, placing Columbia on the proper heading. Three good engines at 100%. Engines are throttling back now easing Columbia through the dense lower altitudes, but continuing to accelerate very rapidly. Columbia is already traveling over 650 miles per hour. Time 45 seconds, all systems are performing well. All three engines is 67% rated thrust. And three engines are throttling up.
Bobby Houston, go at throttle up. All engines are now running at full throttle. All systems performing well. Altitude 67,000 feet. Downrange distance 8 nautical miles. Columbia is traveling over 1,000 miles per hour. Columbia continues to climb at a relatively steep angle at this point, tripling its rate of speed over the next minute. Solid rocket boosters, each delivering 3.3 million pounds of thrust, will burn out and separate at 2 minutes 3 seconds. Time now, 1 minute 48 seconds. Altitude 115,000 feet, downrange distance 18 nautical miles. SRB chamber pressure is tailing off. And Mission Control sees a good booster separation. Columbia is now flying free, powered by its own main engines. Second stage guidance is now in effect. Altitude 184,000 feet, downrange distance 35 nautical miles. Columbia Houston, performance nominal.
heart aid payload specialist, and uh, today I was a subject for a variety of metabolic studies, starting with some renal clearance studies to determine glomerular filtration rate and effective renal blood flow, which we think are increased as part of the diuretic response to fluid shifts early in space flight. And here you can see Dr. Seddon injecting uh, some materials into my venous catheter. Another part of this study is to see how protein is metabolized in space. Uh, it's been known that uh, astronauts lose protein from their muscles, we think, when they're not exercising. Now we found out, we believe, from SLS-1, that we're producing enough protein uh, for our muscles, but we're just breaking it down at a much faster rate. We set the cycle ergometer up on the flight deck so that uh, we'd be able to take advantage of uh, opportunities to look out the window and uh, pick up some of the Earth Ops passes. And as a matter of fact, as Rick uh, found out, he could even continue to cycle and get up in the window and take pictures. Here we are back in our country's orbiting laboratory, and we're setting up, in this case, some instruments to measure our cardiac output in response to different exercise loads. We want to understand how efficiently our body converts oxygen and nutrients into energy. So we have a bicycle ergometer carefully calibrated. We have a mass spectrometer which analyzes our breathing gases, and we're setting that up. Uh, uh, actually, we're working with the echo unit first here to look at our heart directly with ultrasound. And so with this combination of cardiovascular data, uh, lets us understand how efficiently our body converts energy to work. Columbia, Houston, we have an outstanding view of Florida, thanks to your cameras. Well, this question is for the LBNP folks. Uh, the world would like to know whose picture that is behind John's head. 
That is John, uh, John's lovely daughter, Carolyn. For folks that uh, don't understand what we're doing, we are refilling the uh, rodent uh, cage facility with water from our galley. And what we're doing is we're transferring water from the galley into this refill unit bag. Then we'll take the bag back and put the water into the tank that supplies the uh, research animal holding facility. Copy that, Ray. Thanks. This is Dave again. We have a combination of animal and human studies to look at the anemia of space. Uh, early data in SOS-1 showed that a release of red blood cells from the bone marrow was not occurring normally. Uh, so we're now looking at red blood cell incorporation of iron and release from the bone marrow into the blood. Also doing animal studies. to do those same analyses, and we'll understand the red blood cell kinetics and iron incorporation uh, to a much greater extent. Yeah, you know, on your day off, you get out all your toys. <laughs> Glad to hear that. This is Mission Control Houston. We're now replaying some video taken about four hours ago from the Space Shuttle Columbia's payload bay cameras. Coming into frame on the left portion of this video is a smoke pall that's drifting out over the Pacific Ocean. The smoke pall from fires that are burning in Southern California on along the coast from brush fires. Spacecraft communicator Susan Helms had notified the crew that these brush fires were going to be in view as the crew of Columbia passed 150 nautical miles overhead. Columbia crossing over California and its coastal mountain ranges over the areas of Ventura, Santa Barbara, and the San Gabriel Mountains and Riverside. Coming into view now in the center of the screen are the points of origin for these fires. Once again, this video was taped earlier today, about four hours ago, as Columbia orbited over the western California coast.
Happy birthday, Hooter. We all love you. We copy all that. Uh, don't quit your day jobs. <laughs> you got a standing O from the back room. Columbia's altitude is 40,000 feet. Uh, the twin sonic booms of the orbiter are announcing the arrival in the landing area. Commander John Blaha is now flying the vehicle, having taken over for the software. As he begins the uh, wide left overhead turn to set up on uh, final, final approach, approach to, run to runway 22. Columbia Houston, we show you on energy at the 180. On energy at the 180. Columbia's altitude is down to 22,000 feet, uh, descending at a rate of about 220 feet per second. Columbia Houston, we show you on energy at the 90. Columbia speed is down to 420 miles per hour. Range now about nine miles. Time to touchdown, one minute, 45 seconds. Columbia Houston, we show you on glide slope, on center line, surface winds are 350 at 1 to 2 knots. Columbia's altitude is about 6,000 feet. Commander will uh, shortly raise the nose of the orbiter to slow the descent. and the uh, pilot will lower the landing gear at about 400 feet. The landing gear is now down. Main gear touchdown. And nose gear touchdown. Columbia is rolling out on runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base, traveling 5,840,000 miles and completing 14 days in space, which makes the STS-58 mission the longest flight in the shuttle program.
Houston, Columbia is will stop. Columbia, Houston, we copy will stops. And congratulations on a very successful life sciences mission and also for being the uh, fourth longest mission in our space program history. Roger that, Kurt. And from the entire crew, uh, we sure appreciate all the help we got on this mission from everybody on the ground.
crew transport vehicle now moving into place around uh, Columbia's side hatch. The mechanical systems officer here in Mission Control reports that the... Uh, Shut down complete. Columbia Houston, Rick, we copy and we show that also. That uh, those three hydraulic systems are now shut down, and that, uh, of course, is confirmed by pilot Rick Searfoss aboard the vehicle. And Columbia Houston for uh, John, if he's still in the left seat. We do not want you to take free on loop number one to payload it until you talk to us.